Back at the end of March this year, a Tesla Model X driving along US Highway 101 in Mountain View, California, crashed into a previously damaged crash attenuator at the SH85 exit ramp, causing the car's front end to separate from the rest of the vehicle, striking two other vehicles in the process, and ultimately leading to the death of the driver. It was an horrific accident, one which I'm sure everyone watching this would have preferred never happened. And it happened while the car was in autopilot mode. Since the accident, Tesla has rolled out a new software update to all autopilot equipped vehicles to modify the way in which Tesla's autopilot system functions. This includes increasing the nag, reminders to keep holding the wheel that autopilot gives the driver when autopilot is engaged, as well as modifying the sensitivity of the hands on the wheel detection system that it uses to make sure that you really are holding the wheel when autopilot is operating. But last week, while I was out of the office, the US National Transportation Safety Board, the governmental agency responsible for investigating accidents like this, issued its preliminary report into the incident, giving some detailed information about what happened. Tesla's data shows that autopilot system activation has helped prevent plenty of accidents, and it's very competent in a lot of ways. But before I go into the details of this investigation, I should reiterate that this is only a preliminary report, and the NTSB will of course issue its final verdict on the accident at some point in the future. And for those who feel that I'm giving some unfair publicity here, I should note that we've covered other autonomous vehicle incidents on this channel, and the purpose here is to investigate what really happened not portray one party or another in a bad light. And having used both Tesla's Autopilot and Nissan's ProPilot systems extensively over the last two weeks while I was away, I also want to add my observations on what I think needs to change with both systems moving forwards, namely notifications. To the investigation itself, data recorded from the Model X's onboard computer shows that the Autopilot system, which I should remind you is not fully autonomous, but rather an advanced driver assistance feature, was active on four separate occasions during the fatal 32-minute drive. Prior to the crash, it had been operating continuously for 18 minutes and 55 seconds, during which the Tesla system had issued two visual and one auditory alert for the driver to place his hands on the wheel. As they were issued more than 15 minutes before the crash, we can assume that he followed those warnings. During the 60 seconds before the crash, the Tesla detected hands on the wheel for 34 seconds in total, but for the last six seconds of that, the vehicle did not detect anybody touching the wheel. This is interesting because eight seconds before the crash, so further back in time, the Model X was following another vehicle, and although its autopilot speed limit was set to 75 miles per hour, the speed limit was 70, the car was actually traveling at 65 miles per hour because of that vehicle in front. At seven seconds before the crash, the Model X began veering left. While the NTSB doesn't say why, many theories suggest that the vehicle was following the left-hand lane markings, mistaking the exit area as the leftmost lane. By four seconds before the crash, the Model X was no longer behind the vehicle in front, and therefore one second later sped back up, increasing its speed to 70.8 miles per hour from 62 miles per hour. The NTSB said the vehicle did not detect the crash barrier, nor did it take any evasive action before the collision. Of course, without knowing what the driver was doing seconds before the accident, it's hard to exactly know what was going on. But the crash attenuator, previously damaged in a single vehicle crash earlier the same month, was already deployed and thus did not absorb any of the crash impact, which meant that all of the crash energy was transferred to the vehicle and its occupant. This is the main reason why many blame Caltran for the collision, as well as faded road markings. But what is clear, both from videos posted by other Tesla drivers at the same spot, and by my own experiences last week with Autopilot and ProPilot, is that while these semi-autonomous driver's assistance systems are very good, they do get confused, and they can get confused more easily than you might think. With an attentive driver, that's not an issue. If you use the systems as they are intended, they work correctly. Say for a few issues last week, um, the Model S I was driving actually cut up another driver a couple of times and did once try to initiate a lane change, admittedly after I tapped the indicator, in a situation I felt obliged to abort. And the Nissan Leaf became very confused as to where lane markings were a couple of times. Both systems operated pretty well, and when they didn't, 
I was able to intervene because I was paying attention. But I also know how easy it is to get caught out in the monotony of driving. When using these features, it's oh too easy to let your mind drift, which is why I think both Nissan and Tesla need to change their warning systems for drivers, because right now, they're not warning enough. With the radio on and my tunes turned up, I found it hard to hear either Tesla's or Nissan's alert systems on several occasions. And yes, in order to test hands-off detection, I did experiment with varying levels of pressure on the wheel just to see if I could trigger those warnings. The bings and the bongs made by both cars in protest are essentially easy to miss if you're not listening and you're not staring at the dashboard. And if you cannot hear at all because you're deaf, well, then you've even got a harder time figuring out what's going on. And while I know some of you will say, oh yes, but you should be looking at the dash, my response is this. The reason most people look at the dash is to figure out how fast they're going. And if the speed is being governed for you by the car, well, you may not feel the need to look at the dash, and it's probably safer to look out the window. A solution, of course, might be to project a warning light onto the windscreen, as some automakers do for emergency braking. With a split second at 70 miles an hour, the difference between staying safe or crashing, and it being super easy to drift off mentally when using these systems, it's clear driver engagement is a tough nut to crack if we want these semi-autonomous systems to be road legal. Otherwise, we're just going to have to wait until fully autonomous systems are 100% ready. And while Tesla and other automakers say they're close, it's still anyone's guess as to how soon full autonomy will truly be roadworthy and be allowed on the roads. Do you have either of these systems in your car? Do you feel they're ready? Or do you think that it's too easy to be distracted when it comes to communicating what's really going on with them? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. That's it. As always, hit the notification bell to hear the moment a new show is uploaded. And if you want to help us make more of these videos, consider making a donation using one of the links below or by buying something from our shop. Thanks for watching. And until next time, keep evolving.